Hello everyone and welcome back to another week of Storytime Art. My name is Tyler and I'm so glad that you could join us here today. Today we are going to be looking at a very simple material that we can use to make some very spectacular uh, sculptures. So the very simple material we're looking at is boxes or cardboard uh, and we're going to be using this to hopefully build some amazing structures. Okay, so this is an example. This is one that I've been working on for quite some time now. Um, I make these kind of house forms and then I glue them together. Um, you know, maybe I'll make another piece today that I'll stick on here and I just sort of add things as time goes on. And this is a good project that you can work on uh, by yourself or with a nice group of people uh, if you want to, you know, a couple of you could be making um, a different part and then at the end you could assemble them all together, which would be really, really fun. Do some working together there. So I'm going to move this over to the side here so you can see what materials we're going to be working with. As I've showed you, we've got the plain old box. Uh, I've got a basket here with some other things in it, so let's see what we got here. I've been saving some, uh, some boxes here of various sizes. So I've got some big ones, some small ones. Um, I found these, they're already in the triangle shape. Um, these were used, I think, on a, on a picture frame for storage or for, for shipping it. So that's super handy if you find something that's already in the shape. Um, what else do I have? Something that already is comes in that shape as well is some tissue paper or paper roll tubes. So I've got those. Um, another thing to make a bigger circle is if you have the, uh, the end of a tape roll. If you save that part, that's a good thing. Uh, and then I just keep some panels of cardboard here kicking around uh, for a little extra things here and there. Uh, the other materials or the tools that we'll be using uh, are pretty simple today. Um, pencil and a marker, um, some tape as I showed you just a second ago, a pair of scissors would be good. Um, and if the cardboard's super thick, um, you might want to, and, and you need some help with cutting, you can always ask someone, you know, who with bigger hands or an adult or someone who can give you a hand with, with cutting. You know, make sure that, that if you need the help that you ask for it. Uh, also some glue. I've got a glue stick and some white glue here. Okay, so we're going to take a look at now how we can put all things together, all these things together to make a nice, uh, a nice sculpture. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so I have my supplies and my items here now ready to use. I have uh, kind of organized things a little bit um, into sort of the shape. So I've got my circle things here, I've got my triangle thing here, and my box part here. And I'm going to show you how we can make maybe something that is in kind of a house shape or form like this. Now. It's always good when you're working with uh, structures and sculptures to find the things that are already in the forms and shapes as opposed to making a whole thing from scratch. So for example, I have a box here. You know, I have, these are already these shapes and this triangle part, I could put this on here, you know, glue or tape that on, uh, draw some windows or a door on it and call it a day. Um, but what if, what if you don't have this, you know, how, how would we make, uh, how would we make a roof? Okay. So before I do that, I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to show you how we're going to sort of attach things, um, in general and, and what some methods we could use for that are. So you don't have to make, um, houses or structures if you don't want to, you can make something a little kind of weird or abstract or, you know, like a robot or a monster or, or anything like that. Um, and I'm going to use these three items to do that. A good way to do that is to pick a couple items uh, sort of randomly and then think about, hmm, how can I put these together? You know, what, what way would work best? And I can kind of like, you know, maybe that's a good way. Maybe this is a good way. Then I can get it to kind of like stand up or or something like that. Maybe it can be like a kind of a unicycle with a triangle and a pipe on it or something. I don't know. We'll see. Or you can just start gluing things together and, and see and see where it goes. Let, let your creativity sort of take the wheel. 
So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to tape my circle here onto the triangle. I'm going to tape it to the side here. And to get it to stay, I'm going to take my nice long piece of tape, uh, put it in the middle like this. And you want to make sure there's a good amount of tape on all of the things that you're putting together. Okay, so I'm going to now attach this just like that. But I'm sure you've had this happen where you tape something down and the tape either looks really bad or you're not sure, you know, if it'll stay, like later it'll come off, like, you know, then what do you do? What if you're not using very sticky tape? Well, let me show you what you can do. So I like to use tape and glue together. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of my circle wheel thing. Now this glue takes a little bit of time for it to dry, so the tape is going to hold it down in the meantime. So my glue goes down where I want that to go. Then I put my tape down, and if my tape falls off later on, that's no problem because the tape is going to hold it nice and securely into place while the glue is all drying up. And then if the tape falls off later on, then it doesn't matter because the glue is going to hold it in place. So you can see there, there's some glue in there. If you don't think you have enough glue, you can always put a little bit more in there. And then you always want to make sure if something is drying, you want it to be supported. So if I'm, if I'm letting this dry, I'm not going to maybe set it like this where this could sort of lean down. I'm going to maybe put it like this where my thing is it's sitting upright, or if I put it uh, off to the side, I'm going to put something underneath it to kind of support it so that it doesn't sort of droop and, and stay that way. All right, next, I want to put my tube on here. Uh, let's see what would be a good way. I think maybe I'll put it, maybe I'll put it here so I can go with that kind of long, weird, abstract thing. Um, and what I'm going to do for this one is same sort of method. So for taping, I'm going to start, instead of sort of holding this there and, you know, taping it, that gets kind of hard because my hands are kind of large. So I'm going to put a piece of tape so it's half on and half sticking off. I'm going to do that on two sides here, like this. Okay, so now if I kind of like bend the tape back, I've got like kind of curls back. You can start with one if that's easier, or you can do two, or you can do as many as you want. Uh, and then I'm going to use some glue again, and very carefully I'm going to go just around the edge, the rim here. And it's okay if some of the glue sort of drips down. Uh, this stuff usually will dry clear, so you won't see it. Then I'm going to stick that on, and you might want a little bit of help with this one. I find it's always really nice if someone's holding the parts for you while you're applying the tape. So now I'm gonna put some tape on there. And now the tape probably wouldn't hold it on its own, but I'm gonna sort of set this aside and let it dry for a little bit uh, until, until the glue is dry. And then I can take the tape off if I want to. Um, I'm going to throw a little more tape on here just to be on the safe side. So with this one, I'm going to put some tape again, half on this piece, and then this part I'm just going to sort of loop it around like that. And then now that this is here, I'm going to put tape a little bit here. And I want my tape to look like an L. See how these all, they, they kind of look like L's. I want to use, I want to make sure that that is there. And if you want a little extra strength, get yourself a nice long piece, or you can do it in a couple short pieces, and put, your, put some tape on your tape, like that. And that will help your L tape to sort of stay in position a little bit easier. And you've got it a little more, um, a little more sturdy. Now, once the glue has dried on this, if you want to, you can change the color, you know, to cover up the masking tape if you want. In a couple ways, you can paint it, uh, or you can cover. Uh, I covered this thing with uh, with some green tape. 
uh, if you have different colored tapes, uh, or you can color it with markers, or, uh, or you can just leave it the way it is. I think it's kind of neat to be able to see exactly where you've connected all the parts. All right, so I'm gonna move this back to the side. And I know we were jumping around a little bit, but I'm gonna go back to our house thing. Now that we've learned how to attach some things together, uh, I'm gonna show you how we can maybe make our very own roof for this house, because I used my triangle roof over here. So this box, I opened it up, and I'm gonna quickly just cut the flaps off. And you'll see why I'm doing this a little bit later, or you can bend them inside if you want to keep them. Um, but I am going to keep these handy because I might use them for something else later on. Okay, so I've got my box now with an open, uh, the open bottom here. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is with my sort of flat panel here, I'm going to draw myself a triangle. And I want to make sure that my triangle is the uh, at least as wide as my box is. So if this is gonna be where my roof goes, my, my uh, triangle needs to be at least, if not a little bit larger. If it's a little bit bigger, then you can always, um, you can always cut it to be a bit smaller. So that's always good. Uh, if you don't have a ruler, you can always use a piece of cardboard with a straight edge on it. So I'm just gonna go right to the corners on this one, just like that. And the nice thing about this piece is I can probably get two out of there. So I'm gonna cut this one out. And instead of turning my scissors, I'm gonna pull them out, start from this corner to the inside. That's just gonna make your cutting a whole lot easier. You can also use a thinner cardboard or, or card stock, thick paper. Uh, Bristol board, those things will work just as fine uh, for these projects. Now, since I need two triangles, I'm going to just lay this one down on the cardboard and trace it out so that my two triangles will be as identical as possible. So I'm going to have twin triangles. See there, I went all the way through and it was a little bit tougher. Now I'm gonna keep these in case I need more triangles later. It's kind of like a bow tie, kind of cool. Put that in my basket. And now I'm going to start to assemble my roof. I'm gonna have my open, the open area at the bottom. And again, with the, the tape and the glue method, I'm gonna use a little bit of both. I'm actually going to use a, a wider tape for this one. I'm going to put the tape on half like that. And then so the tape is half on the triangle and half on the cardboard. And then maybe on the back side, on the inside there, I'm just going to put a little line of glue. Okay, so that it's ready. Uh, and then I'm gonna take maybe my normal tape or the thick one, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna go back to those L shapes that I made earlier. Put an L shape there, and an L shape there. Perfect, all right. So now once that sort of dries up, trim this little guy here. Well, that's kind of neat. My triangles were actually, they were bigger than my than my rectangle or my square part. So it kind of hangs over like a real, uh, like a real house. All right, next I'm gonna do, uh, go ahead and do that to the other side. I'm gonna do that. Try to do that nice and quick. I'll keep you waiting on this part. Again, a little bit of glue. So the, the key thing to remember here is that you're always, if you're gluing stuff, uh, you're always having something to hold it in place 
while the glue dries because our glue takes a little bit of time for it to dry completely. Cut the rest of that tape. Rip it. There we go. All right, now I need a bit of a roof part for uh, for this. Uh, and let's see, what do we have around here? I could probably use this. This is a white, uh, a white piece here. And what I'm gonna do is to measure it, I'm gonna put my house on the cardboard like this, upside down. Draw sort of a line there. Okay, you can use whatever you want. You can use paper for this or, or cardboard or whatever. This is like extra thick. Oof, that's tough to cut. You might want to use something a little bit thinner for yours. Oof, there we go. And now I am going to do the same process by gluing and taping these on to here. All right, so let's do, remember we want our sort of L shapes. There's a piece there and a piece there. So they're kind of like hanging off the side. A little bit of glue along the ridge here. And again, if you're having trouble working with all these, uh, you know, materials, Take your time, go nice and slow, uh, because if you work sometimes really, really quickly, um, you know, the glue and things might not hold, and then you might get a little bit frustrated, which is absolutely okay. Uh, but, you know, if you need some help with stuff, go and ask someone for help. Um, I love it when people ask me for help, and I, I try to make sure I ask people for help as well. All right, so now I've got half a roof, and if I wanted to, I could actually leave that part open so I can have like a little attic in there. Now the very last little finish, finishing touch is, uh, is the door. So I'm gonna leave this one to dry. I'm gonna put it over to the side here and come back to this one, and I'll show you how I made this door. Uh, I'll make it on the other side this time. So you can make it whatever size you want. You can sketch it out beforehand. Where's my marker? There you are. Rascal. And I'm going to draw a line there and a line there. And that's going to be my door. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut straight up the one side straight up the other side and I'm going to fold it, punch it back on the inside like that. That way, if I ever want to, hmm, I don't think I want this door here anymore, I'm just going to pop that back out, maybe glue it or put some tape on the back and now I've got my wall again. Or you can have a door, like it's a door that opens and closes, kind of like that. All right, so now that I've made this, let's see. Maybe I can pull my giant structure over. And now I can sort of decide, hmm, do I want this to go here? Or do I want this to go here? Or how, how would I like to do that? And the nice thing about that is that's something, like I said before, you can work together with people um, if you want to. Or you can be working on your own. Um, and just sort of put things where you think they, they would fit nicely. Okay, so that's, that's, our, uh, that's our project for today. I hope you enjoyed, uh, and please feel free to, you know, if I, if I went too quickly through any parts, to pause the video, rewind it, rewatch a part, um, and if there's any artwork that you've made that you'd like to show us, please do so. You can post it on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, with our hashtag AGH at home.
right there, AGH at home. All right. Thanks a lot for joining us, folks, and we'll see you again next week.